All right, so I received a question yesterday. I posted on my Facebook wall, you know, hey, what type of videos will people like to see? Uh, leave the comments and the status or send me a message. And I got a few responses, which, you know, was actually a surprise and I got, I got more than I expected. And um, one question that I found interesting was uh, the expansion of thought. One of my friends wanted me to speak about the expansion of thought. Um, now that's a very broad subject. There are different ways to go about that. You know, when you're talking about, um, you know, just a, a combined consciousness of all the people in the universe, or you know, just the, the just consciousness between you and another person, um, or even your own consciousness, how aware you become over your own lifetime. So I decided I was going to hit it from kind of like a, a personal point of view. You know, a more a more singular point of view. So. Um, in case you haven't heard, there's something called neuroplasticity. Uh, and neuroplasticity is basically uh, a word that just describes how moldable and how, and how, um, how able our brains are subject to change. Um, and most people, when they hear that, they'll think about like children. Because you know children, when they're first born, they really don't know how to walk, talk, they don't know anything. And so they simply just become a product of their surroundings. Whatever they see is what they become. You know, that they'll start to walk the way that the people around them walk. They start to exhibit behaviors that the people around them exhibit. They start to say words that other people say. You know, that's how you get your first language and everything else. And people will say, okay, well, um, clearly, just, just through the exhibition of these behaviors, it seems apparent that children, babies, infants, um, are more prone to having their consciousness and their brains molded a certain way than adults. As a matter of fact, that for a long time, until about uh, 19, I want to say about 1970s, 1980s, somewhere in that time frame, um, we believe that, you know, adult consciousness or, or adult minds, rather, couldn't be changed at all. Let me explain what I, mean, what I mean when I say mind and consciousness, because mind consciousness to me are the same thing and the brain is something completely different. You see, your mind is your, your um, kind of like your spiritual being, you know, that, that's, what you're, that's what you're able to experience, how you're able to experience things. Your brain is more of a, of a physical entity. Your brain takes signals and spits them out to the rest of your body. That's how you're able to spit, you know, spit out words, and that's the reason why you're able to 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 move and everything else. Um, and it also receives signals. So you may uh, see the color red, for instance, and you'll receive that signal in your brain, and it'll make a specific part of your brain light up. But that still doesn't explain why you're actually able to experience the color red, or able to experience emotions, or able to experience, you know, specific feelings, which may be completely different than someone else. Even though on a CAT scan, you know, it may make the same part of your brain light up, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're having the same experience. So that's all subject to the mind, which is something that we, you know, science hasn't gotten to the point where it's able to, to record. Um, anyway, all I'm trying to say about, uh, about the, the, about neuroplasticity and the ability to, to shape one's mind is that it's possible. You know, like I said, up until the seventies or eighties, they didn't believe that it was even possible. But now they're saying that, that the adult mind is actually more capable of it than human minds. What does that mean? That means if you suck at anything and you're like, oh, there's no way that I'm ever going to be good at this. You're probably right. But at the same time, if you suck at something and you're 30, 40, 50 years old and you would like to become good at it, it would be easier for you to learn that new behavior or that new, that new habit than it would for a 12-year-old or a 2-year-old. Which makes sense when you actually think about it because they don't even have motor skills or the experience in order to fathom exactly how they're supposed to do it. They're starting from scratch. But when it comes to you starting a new behavior, you, you have people to work with, you understand language, you understand physics hopefully, and whatever else it takes in order for you to, to master this new skill. You know, neuroplasticity to me is an amazing thing because this, this study, this, um, this subject in itself is, is, uh, is symbolic of the potential of human beings. Quite frankly, you know, that, that it, the study of neuroplasticity basically says that you can do anything as long as you're willing to learn it. I think that's great. If you want to expand one's consciousness, if you want to, you know, become a better philosopher, a better reader, a better skateboarder, you know, um, a better magician, 
singer, songwriter, you want to learn new languages? Well, this science right here says if you're over the age of 25, you're actually more capable of it than you were if you were a baby. You know, regardless of the brain's physical growth. Because, you know, brain cells start dying between the ages of 25 and 27 in the average human being. Have a good day.